personal. I heard that prayer. <laughs> You're live. All actions are being recorded. Okay, so I'm going to be asking you about that. And I'll ask you about your accomplishments. And we'll sort of take it from there. Well, 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 here we are inside the Jazz Jacuzzi. For such a time as this, we take a little time out to push the positive and people who make a difference. On today, Prayer Chain Day, downtown Flint, had the privilege of hearing from a woman of God. For the sake of this interview, I'm going to call her Evangelist Monica Galloway. Hello, Monica. How are you? I'm very well, sir. How are you? I'm great. Good. Thanks of, uh, for coming by, people who make a difference. Here at WFOV, we are taking just a little time out uh, for this interview. Okay. Talk to me about Prayer Chain Day. Uh. Um, prayer chain day. I am just so thankful for um, Sister Geneva. I was telling her, I just left her as a matter of fact, and um, I was just telling her that um, back in like 2007 and 8, um, she would be going down Dort Highway and um, her and Stephen Bird would be declaring that Dort Highway would not have the prostitution. And I was so young in the faith, you know, and so I just felt like I gleaned from where they were. And and since then, the authority that I learned, even in, in those what they call Jericho walls, um, walks, um, has evolved into this. And so I'm always honored um, when the prayer day happens because our city has to continue to pray if, if things are going to change. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. What led, and this might sound like a crazy question, but what led to your prayer of today, this afternoon? You know what? Um, I am a student of God's Word. Um, I am um, blessed with the leadership that I have over at Ebenezer Ministries. And I, since I've been in government especially, I study governmental scriptures um, because the Word of God tells us that if we decree a thing, it will be established that God watches over His Word. And so if we learn what God says about government and we say them enough because life and death is, is in our tongue, God is responsible for watching over that. And so that's how we got to today. And, and it doesn't just happen. You guys hear from it today. And when I say you guys, the people, but those of us that really pray, yes. um, prayer chain day is Every day. Yes. And so um, that's what led to today. And so um, it was a it was an encouraging thing because it reminds us that we know that um, we are not like those without hope in spite of what's going on. You are listening to WFOV 92.1 LP FM, or you might be Facebooking. So we'd like to say welcome. Special guests this afternoon. Seventh Ward Council Person Monica Galloway. Yeah. Monica, yeah. you're in a race yes. for re-election. I am. What do you tell the people, the residents of the Seventh Ward, about your accomplishments during your time in office thus far? Well, I, I try to let the residents know um, what I've been doing. For the last four years, I've been an active um, participant in the Michigan Municipal League. Um, which um, trains governmental leadership. And um, they have multiple levels of leadership, and, and I've completed two levels of leadership, mm -hmm. and I'm actually working on the third. But the thing that I want residents to know is I am consistently educating myself on governmental affairs. And, and actually, even though I've served for four years, I'm really just feeling as though I'm getting the information that I really need to be um, successful in this um, seat. I'm learning about governmental things. I'm learning um, partnership and relationships with other municipalities across the state. And so that's what I want people to know. Councilwoman Galloway now has governmental experience behind her, um, in addition to the love that I already have for the community that I serve. So as a friend of mine says, it gets greater later. It does. 
And, and I just hope that um, residents will recognize that um, where we are, we're in critical times. We're making decisions right now that are going to affect generations. And it's just not, in my opinion, experience is needed for such a time as this. You have a pretty diverse ward. Mm -hmm. It's a great mix of residents. Mm -hmm. You have some very large businesses, Mm -hmm. churches in your area. Mm -hmm. What is your relationship with, like, the business community? You know what? I I don't have a lot of relationships with the um, businesses downtown. I do have relationships with um, some of the churches, but I really... In in this four years, when I came on four years ago, city council didn't have any authority. We were strictly under the emergency manager. And so um, I was trying to grasp my role as the council person. I was trying to understand how do you govern when you really don't have any authority. And then that transition to a little bit of authority and now into trying to establish home rule. And so the opportunity to get down with, get out there and and really um, get to know the businesses hasn't happened. And that's a piece that I need to do better at, but I needed to learn the core of my job first. And that's what I really was um, focused on. When I look at the businesses in your area, downtown had escaped me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coca-Cola Factory, mm-hmm. yep. ABC 12, yeah. and ABC 12 could have moved out of the area, yeah. but they decided to build up instead of move out. Mm-hmm. You have the new food bank yeah. facility. Yeah. You have Baker Transportation Hub over there. Yes. You have the home of the Firebirds. Yes, yes. And that's not even, you're not even talking about the ones downtown. No. You're talking about over off Adored Highway. Yes. And we do actually have a new business that's coming in to um, um, Bear Younger. They were a business that was there for quite some time off of Lippincott. Yes. Um, I mean, Lapeer, I'm sorry. And they have sold and they, because they were expanding so much. So we have a trucking company that um, loves Flint. He's from Flint, but he's been out of Grand Rapids. And so I've tried to foster that relationship as my starting point. Um, but there are some great things that are going on in Flint and, um, and I will do a better job at reaching out to those businesses because, because they make a difference. There are other places that they could be. Yes. So I mentioned those particular businesses because many of the other wards don't have these jewels that you do in your ward. You're right. So as we're driving around, looking around and assessing our community, we should be grateful that we do have major players in the seventh ward. Yeah. I think that um, sometimes when you are faced with so many other challenges mm-hmm. that if we're not careful, we begin to take the things that we do have for granted. And I, th- I think that without realizing that may be a piece of of what we've done. And and I have to say, and you know, the seventh ward is a very um, fortunate ward. We do have our plights. We do have our issues. But when you look at some of the devastation in our sister wards, there is a lot going on. And so with the limited amount of resources that are available, I just um, ask that my ward would take into account the, the challenges that other wards are facing. Not that what we're experiencing isn't challenging, but that we could be patient and recognize that we still are moving, but but with the resources, we may not be the area that sees those dollars right away. Here's a question I'd love to ask. You're one person. You can't be everywhere. Mm-hmm. There are umpteenth neighborhood groups, block clubs mm-hmm. in your area. Mm-hmm. What can the residents themselves do to assist you? 
You know what? My number is 810-955-9370. And I'm glad you asked that question. Um, what I share with residents is I am only one person, but what I love to do is partner. Because there are a lot of people that have been in government longer than me. They've been in politics longer than me. They've been active in the community longer than me. But it takes a community effort. And so if you see that there are areas of improvement that I need, I welcome that. I can't do everything. And I even put a shout out to the um, those that ran in the primary. Mm -hmm. Because we tell residents that I want to serve you, but when I don't make it to the general election or I don't make it to the seat, I tell them that passion shouldn't change. You ran on a different platform than Councilwoman Galloway. Whoever sits in the seat when November comes, wouldn't it be great if all five people that ran came together and took a portion of responsibility to make our ward better? What kind of ward would we be or have if we did that? That would be a great training ground for someone who still aspires to the seat. Maybe when you decide to move on, that would give them actual training. It is, And you know what? I shared that. I said to them... You know, if I spoke to um, um, Marcus and, you know, he's a young African-American man, not that it's about race, but as you know, with our voter population, the fact that we have a young black male that is interested in getting involved in governmental things saying, hey, come alongside of me. Let's do this together. There are some things that you know that I don't know. There are some people that you're going to be able to touch that I'm not going to be able to touch. And so let's put our efforts together. I said the same thing to Ms. Driscoll, said the same thing to um, Mercedes and and, and even talked to um, Heather um, Marola Kale because that way you show people that it wasn't just about getting your vote. Because if you love and you really have a passion for the community, whether you sit in the seat or not is not going to change that. We face some challenges as it relates to our educational system. Mm -hmm. Since your time in office, uh, there's been a school closing. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I actually called you, I believe, during that time I did mm -hmm. because of the school closing. Mm -hmm. You don't have a direct connection with the school board mm -hmm. per se or a direct function. Correct. How can we look to you and your leadership mm -hmm. to help close some of those gaps as far as losing residents so schools have to close and mm -hmm. educational deficits and things of that nature. Well, one of the things that I learned during that time, thank you for bringing that up, um, when when the schools were closing, I did research. So I went through the state to find out how many students, how much money, um, to generate into dollars to see really how that affected. And so what we can do is the school board meets twice a month. And so all we have to do is get out in record numbers to let the school district know that we're there. And also it's important to know that the school board mm -hmm. is the is the leadership over the school districts. And so we have to bridge that relationship so that we can know they can know you're not alone. We're here for you. Um, but we, we, we are going to make a difference in that because our communities, you can't not have a school in the community and expect it to be vibrant. Young parents will, do not want to move into a community where there is no school. And so um, when you close a school, you devastate a community. But not in just that. The children who were going to Scott School have to spend longer times on the buses yes. to get to the schools that they go to. So these children have to get up earlier. They spend longer times on the bus. We don't know what the conditions of their home life are. And then it takes them longer to get home. And then we expect them to do homework. And then we, we expect them to get some sort of social skills. It is a detriment in more ways than one. And so we have to make the people that are making decisions for us accountable to look at that because that is their responsibility. I am, for the sake of full disclosure, I am a resident in the 7th Ward. Mm -hmm. 
you also have some jewels over on the campus of the Flint Cultural Center. Yeah. We hear there's a new school in the planning on the site of the old Central Whittier sites. My question, and this question comes from a viewer, mm -hmm. certain parts of your ward get great police protection. Mm -hmm. We see in one area there is the Mont Community College Police, mm -hmm. University of Michigan Police, mm -hmm. Private Security Police, mm -hmm. and also Flint City Police. Mm -hmm. And just down the street, a little ways, there's some negative energy moving into the community. Mm -hmm. So how do you reassure residents who are not seeing that kind of police presence in their area mm -hmm. that you, the city, and the city departments are still working in their behalf? Mm -hmm. Well, um, just so you know, um, I have been working um, as close as I can with Chief Johnson mm -hmm. um, recognizing that their staff is limited but asking you know chief can can your patrolman just cruise through mm -hmm. every once in a while because if your cruisers just cruise through on their way to wherever they're going it's a deterrent if if people start seeing the cruisers Every once in a while, they won't know when they're coming, right. and so they might be less likely to commit some sort of crime. Um, but I will say that even the college cultural area is experiencing less police protection than they had before, which is why now you're seeing them take the effort and the initiative to do private security on their own, where homeowners are paying $500 a year mm -hmm. to become a part of that private service because they're experiencing experiencing um, break-ins and the home invasion. As you know, the young man that was killed protecting his wife yes. when someone invaded his home. We shouldn't lose our lives protecting our family, and so we've got to do better. And so I am working with Chief Johnson to see what we can, but residents get to know each other, yes. talk to each other, get each other's phone number, call each other and say, hey, I just want to check and see. I saw something going on. Did you know somebody? Get a license plate. Make your presence known. You're not the police, but go outside your house so that they know I see you. Mm -hmm. And 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 that will be a deterrence too because they'll look and say, oh, they're paying attention over here. And, and so we got to police ourselves. And criminals do not like eyes and ears. They don't. They don't. Here's a question that I struggle with. I'm not an elected official mm -hmm. in your capacity. Mm -hmm. But how do you... How do you manage the needs of your ward versus the needs of the city? That is a really, really um, tough thing. But when I make decisions for the seventh ward, I'd really do my best to hear from the residents. But in my opinion, any decision that I make for the seventh ward should be for the betterment of all people. Mm -hmm. And so um, I am loyal to the seventh ward, but decisions are human decisions. And, and, and they shouldn't be unbalanced even if it is the seventh ward. And so um, I, I do my best, I, you know, and, and we got issues that come up and, and I try to share with my ward, look, you guys, I understand your plight in this, but, but trying to do what you'd like me to do is going to negatively and, and hinder the entire community. And I'm sure that's not what we desire to do. We want things done properly, um, but we can't hinder an entire city for some of the concerns that are high priorities for us. I have been told on many occasions that I'm very special and gifted. Okay. Momentarily, I want you to close your eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grant you, mm -hmm. as a member of the city council, mm -hmm. unlimited dollars. Mm -hmm. What would you do with those dollars? You know what? Um, I would... First of all, um, 
fix our parks. So our children have a place to go in which they feel safe. I would um, look at the school structure and um, create an environment in which our children feel safe in their schools, um, help programs where children um, have after school activities of um, arts, learning in the arts. We know that the arts is where our children can be the most creative and innovative there's an untapped area in their lives um, that we would have community centers that our children feel safe in, um, tear down some of the blight, no question, um, but help people um, that are financially strapped have a resource to go to. And I would help people to transition from um, renting to owning so that they can be not only a part of the tax base, but they can be an a owner in the, the investment of this community and that their children would see it and that it would just revitalize. And, and I would put more people, um, police officers on the street, but more than that, I would begin to educate our community um, in job empowerment um, and the list could go on and on and on. You're wonderful. Well, with that snapback yeah. reality, reality, we have a limited number <laughs> of funds. What are your priorities? I, well, of course, you know, the priority for everyone is safe, reliable, and affordable water. Um, but I would like...